What is going on everybody? Happy Pokemon Day. If you're watching this on Tuesday, if you don't know, Pokemon is turning 22 years old. Congratulations to you. Anyways, I'm Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist. And welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my passion of the oceans and its creatures with you through art. I post every Tuesday focusing on art and Saturday focusing on science. You click the blue thumbnail, which means you're here for how to art. Today we're going to be discovering how I painted the Titan Scorpion Fish. Brush is ready. Let's dive in. I typically start with my background. In this case I wanted to add some blue and green to my painting. It seemed too dark in my reference photo. If the background is dark, I want to make sure that the subject is bright, or is the primary focus of the piece. But the Titan Scorpion Fish is great at hiding. I felt that if I had a black background with dark rocks, a light sediment, and a dark fish, you wouldn't know what to look at. I made the decision to add some blue and green to the background and lighten up the painting. The sediment in my reference photo of the coral are all out of focus. I use my flat, round brush to lay down the base color, which is light pink. This brush helps me lay down color in a soft and unfocused manner. I then go over the pink in dark spots. These spots will not stay this prominent. They are just the shadows of the pebbles. I just need to lay down the dark before I can add my highlights to the rocks. I use several glazed layers to lighten the sediment again. Although my backgrounds are not extremely detailed, I still spend a chunk of time on them. I don't want to come back to the background again until the very end when my brightest, with my brightest highlights and pearlescent phase. Once I like how the background looks, I work on the scorpion fish. I start with a base coat of red, browns, and orange. I make sure that the coat is not even. I want spots and patches in the skin. Unfortunately, I lost most of the reds and oranges when the paint dried with the browns. I want the fish to blend into the sediment and thought that the reds would pull through stronger. Oh well, you live and learn. I let this layer dry and work on the background again. I soften the back coral and give it shape. I then go over the sediment with gray mixed with a touch of magenta. This will be the highlights for the rocks. Back to the fish. I decide to lay out the spines and the shadows on the skin of the fish. I know I will need to lighten the fish in the future, but I just want to start building a deep, my deep shadows. I use black for this bit. I typically try to mix black with other colors, but I know several glaze layers will be added over this, so flat black is fine for now. Once that is dry, I add a layer of orange glaze over the whole fish. I add some dark shadows to the pectoral fins of the fish. This is done in a dark purple. It doesn't look purple because the orange underneath is changing the colors. It is a great way to add deep shadows. The fish is starting to take shape. It was at this moment that I decided that the fish was just too dark. So I do the only thing that I can. Yep, you guessed it, I add another layer of glaze. I mix white and magenta with my glazing medium. I want it to be a thicker layer of paint so that there's more pigment to glazing medium. I go through adding texture and splotches to the skin. The cool thing about glazing is that you can still see the layer beneath it. It is important to let all of your layers dry between applications. If you don't let it dry, the previous layer will pull up and you will have wasted all of that time and energy. I add my oranges again and add texture to the fish with my flat round brush. It is a similar technique to dry brushing. There is little paint on the brush. This way only the tips of the bristles are used to add paint. It is a great way to add texture. I add shadows to the pectoral fins. The pectoral fins are not smooth but layered and folded like a paper fan. There are high spots and low spots. It is easier for me to add the dark layer and then go back with the tiny highlights. 
It is important to add colors from the surroundings onto your primary subject. In this case, there is magenta and green in the coral. If the scorpion fish is trying to hide and replicate its surroundings, it will have these colors on its body, or will have the color reflected off of its skin. It is time to, for finishing details, including bright highlights. I use my liner brush to add white to the eyes and to the topmost surfaces of the fish. This includes spines, fins, mouth, and dorsal surfaces. I also apply white over places that I want bright colors. I wanted the skin of the lips and the fins to be bright orange. I apply orange over the surface of the white and it almost glows. It gives the illusion that light is filtering through the skin and glowing. I add some last minute details and call this painting finished. Thank you so much for going on this adventure with me and by watching this video. If you think that I deserve it and this, you enjoy this channel, click that subscribe button. If you want to be notified by when I post my videos, click that little bell icon. If you would like to help this channel financially so that we can be here in the future, I sell art in the form of prints and originals on my website. For prints, just send me an email and we can get that ordered for you. I also sell merchandise on teespring.com. Links are down below. Happy creating and God bless.